In this video, I will discuss the workings of the pipe and dip system calls. Pipe creates a unidirectional communication channel between two related processes. By related, we mean they have either a sibling relationship or a parent-child relationship. Um, so the way a pipe system call works is you would define, let's say a pipe FD, it takes an area of two, so we'll call the pipe system call and we will pass it this array and when the pipe system call returns it will populate this pipe FD array with two entries and the two entries point to the two ends of the pipe and as convention would have it this is the read end of the pipe and this is the write end of the pipe so uh, I'll just make the information flow this way. So this is the read end of the pipe and that's the right end of the pipe. So let's take a simple example of this. Here is a example of the use of pipe. I've declared a, a pipe array. Uh, I'm calling the pipe system call and I'm what I'm my Ex uh, the purpose of this ex example is I have a parent and a child and the parent and child communicate with each other using a pipe and in this particular example the parent will this is the parents code and this is the child's code and the parent will as you will see write to the child to the pipe and the child is going to read from the pipe so there's a read from the pipe and what the parent is writing to the pipe is what his argv of one is which means that if i were to um, if this were in a file called pipe one dot c and if i were to have built it using gcc uh, minus o let's say pipe one and pipe one dot c then I would just run it like this. I would run it as pipe one uh, with some value. So let's say I said, how are you? So you'll, re you'll recall that this entire thing goes into my argv of one. So that's my argv and argv of one got set. So in this example, I'm just writing that argv of one and getting the string length and writing it to the read right end. And this one is gonna read it. Um, reading, I'm reading one character at a time rather than read the entire string because there is uh, there was no string, there's no separator. So I'm reading one character at a time and it's simply writing it out. But what I'm writing, what the what the child is doing is he's writing it to the terminal. In other words, he's writing it to the standard out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, then. Uh, the only only caveat, only thing that we always try to do is we we try to play it safe. So with these two safe calls are, we close the end not being used. So the the parent has no interest in reading. So he's gonna parent is gonna close this guy. And the child is gonna is not gonna read, so the child is gonna close this one. Uh, I will now look at the dupe system call. The dupe system call duplicates file descriptors. And 
it is a useful mechanism to be able to copy file descriptors from one place to another place so in other words if you guys recall if this processes file descriptor table had entries like this let's say 0 1 uh, 2 and 3 and let's say I did something like this I uh, did something like open uh, some foo.txt let's say uh, as a uh, write or write only because I just want to write to it um, then it would return let's say a file descriptor in this case the file descriptor is going to be 3 so now if I were to do a dupe call uh, I'm going to show you actually a dupe2 because dupe is just an exception case of dupe2. Dupe2 is more generic. Dupe2 takes two arguments. It takes an old file descriptor and a new file descriptor. And what it does is it first it does a two-step process. One is it closes the new file descriptor. If it's already open if open if it's not open it has no it doesn't do anything it just uses it second copies the file descriptor tables entry for the old FD to the file descriptor table of the new FD In other words, if I were to do something like this, if I were to do a dupe 2 right now and say FD comma 1, then what it's going to do is it's going to close this and if let's say this one was as as I said, it's, op it's pointing to the, the foo.texts file structure, then right now after this two-step process this one will be closed and this one will be copied from here to here so what's the point of this well now what happens is if I were to do a write on FD and let's say I did just a string like that now the question is where will this go well it the way it has it right now it's gonna go to the file foo.txt but here's an interesting thing if I were to do a write if I were to do a write and if I did it to 1 and I did high and 2 it will also go to the same place because now I have both of them pointing to the same thing so let's take an example of why this might be interesting to us here's an example of that so in this example what I'm doing is I am uh, creating a I'm creating a, uh, a child process and within the child process I created a file called output output uh, so the way I'm going to run this program is as it says you're going to run this as dupe one at the command prompt assuming you already ran it um, command uh, with no argument something like a date command if you will followed by an output file some output file like out dot text what this program will do is it'll create a child and within the child it'll run date run run this and an output the output of the command is sent to out dot text in other words what this really does is the equivalent of date redirected to out dot text that's exactly what it's doing so let's see how it pulls this off so I've uh, noted the command this is my command and that's my output file and I've created a child inside the child what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just printing a statement to tell you what it's going to show up uh, and then it's going to create an output file again the permissions are just 
to say that I'm creating it with uh, read write permission this flag here says that I'm creating with a read and uh, write permission uh, uh, read write permission for uh, sorry let's see zero one one zero is six zero one zero zero is four one zero zero is four so that's it what it's saying is I'm creating a read write no execute permission read permission read permission so there is read write permission for the owner um, for the group there's only read permission and for others there's read permission so that's the flag it's gonna it's got permissions it's gonna create by in any event um, now I'm doing a dupe too so at this point what it's gonna do is it's close closing the standard out and connecting filling the standard outs file descriptor entry with the with this file so now when I do exec LP date doesn't know that this is happening date will still write to std out because that's what the date command does but the std out actually now points to foo.txt or whatever my out.txt file is that's it uh, so this is how a command like this that you give to the shell is implemented within the shell now you can you can think of something similar to this what if what if I had something like cat and I'm giving it an input uh, which is not from the standard in or uh, but from a, some sort of a file some file dot text how does this work well this is almost identical to what we are doing here except that I'm not going to create this file I'll just open this file so this line here will go from being uh, let's just write it here let's say this line here will go from being an open because we're assuming that it already exists and uh, this line here is going to then become a, a dupe 2 but this time I am going to do uh, OFD and 0 because I'm saying that I'm going to hijack the standard in so that the, sta the cat which usually expects its input from the standard in is now going to get its input from the from the file 